Hello everybody, Linksy here, and today we're going to be finalizing our castle and our dwarven kingdom. And on the last episode, I farmed over 700,000 blocks to carve out enough space so we can get started for today's episode. Carving out the entirety of the hallway going in, built up a little bit of a paw, and of course, made an entire forge area. So let me land up here and I can show you guys exactly what I got planned for today's episode, because it's going to be a big one. So if you haven't done so already, grab yourself a snack, get yourself a drink, get comfy, and let's get into it. Now, before we get into anything that's going on behind me, I want to address you guys' attention to the things going on in front of me because we're going to be finalizing this entire room over here, the main forge area, where I've got my pillars already planned out for where I want to put them. Some things may change here depending on how everything lines up. And I'm going to be doing the whole Dovran Kingdom castle bit back here. Or a little bit of a facade, if you will, for our bridge over here that's going to be leading into the Dwarven Kingdom beyond this wall. Now, like I've already said previously before, this is going to be a new region of the world. So a lot of my underground builds are going to be going within these walls in here. This doorway is going to lead elsewhere. This doorway is going to lead elsewhere. And then we'll have a doorway right here that's going to go into more of the Dwarven Kingdom. Where I'm thinking about keeping a lot of my masons. Currently right now, I've only got about 24 masons inside my villager trading hall. I want to be able to buy more quartz, more quartz pillars, more colored terracotta, and I want to have the ability to sell a lot more stone down the road. Because as the world continues to grow, so do the projects. Because it's important for me to continue to keep on upgrading the infrastructure of this world so I can take this world to new heights. Because trust me, I've got massive plans for this world for the future, especially when it goes to expanding for the future. Behind me, I've got a little bit of a city, but I want to expand this city tenfold. But I'm not able to maintain or do any of that if I don't have any of the infrastructure to make that happen. Enough about all that. Let's get into the little bit of the dwarven entrance that I've been working on here. As you guys saw a little bit in the very beginning of today's video was I've got a little bit of something going on behind these doors. And let me show you a little bit of a closer look as to what that looks like currently right now. So obviously I haven't put in the redstone door here but i will i promise i have a little bit of the deep slate being built up here and i'll explain to you guys why that is i've got giant archways going all the way down into the dwarven keep i'm not sure if youtube is able to pick that up but i want to be messing around a lot with light levels in here and i want to make this place look very dark and i do want to add some braziers along the way right here this is going to be a focal point this is my wolf paw because obviously i want this whole castle to be inspired by wolves and dwarves and i'm really pleased with the way that turned out i think that basically looks exactly like a wolf paw if you ask me or 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 bear paw or bear paw i'll take that too but pretty good uh looking back at the staircase here you'll notice that i've got a little bit of an eroded effect here so i want to have water cascading all the way down here and i chose to go with water and not lava and that's mainly because as we fly down into here, let me show you guys a little bit of a better look. All the way from up here, when we enter the Dwarven Kingdom, there is a focal point that I want to maintain. And by having lava on the sides of these walls right here, I'm a little bit of afraid that the light pollution from the lava and the very orange Cheeto looking water would be attracting your eye away from the main focal point that I want you to maintain. So... The magma blocks in comparison to the lava blocks back there this is a lot more bright and vibrant in comparison to this so it still draws the eye a little bit better but the wolf paw is also kind of attracts the eye a little bit nicer as well but i do plan on adding some braziers not these braziers down here but these braziers up here turn the other way going all the way up to the doorway and that staircase that i just showed you guys i do plan to make a little bit more chaotic looking I do need to figure out how I want to light this up exactly. And I'm kind of leaning a little bit more towards using the candles. Because I won't be able to get away with doing any of this. Because we're going to be able to see the glass and everything underneath. So I think candles might be our best bet. Probably this kind of color candle or the darker color candle. I'm not 100% sure. But we'll figure it out. And as we fly on out of the Dwarven Kingdom. How good does this feel already? And we haven't even done any of the gradient up the walls and it already feels so dang good but anyways i'm very excited to get into today's episode i hope you guys are too 
So let's get these walls done. So I haven't done the walls yet, but what I did do is the floor right here. And I'm really happy the way this all turned out. I'm trying to get rid of all the torches currently right now. I built up these braziers all the way down, which I think look absolutely amazing, especially with shaders. Comes off very dwarven. So I'm really feeling like this is the trajectory of what I want to do for this whole hallway here. I need to add in my water down here. And I wouldn't mind adding another brazier around this location, except it doesn't really work with what I got planned. But I think the paw having a little bit more of the darker stone in here is turning out way, way better than expected. And this whole like thing that I got going on up here is turning out really well. I'm going to be adding in a lot more slabs and a lot more messing this thing up kind of deal. That's going to be next. But here are the braziers and I'm loving them. That's one side of the wall fully done now. Looking at the comparison between the two, definitely looks a heck of a lot better than this side. This side looking a lot better. Absolutely love that. I haven't gotten any of the water in here yet, so I do need to remove all these torches, which I think will help out with the light pollution along here. But with all said and done, we got a lot of that texturing done towards the base of the build. So let's start adding in a little bit more of the water. Oh. Man, I always, I always miss a wall. Flawless. All right, let's remove those torches now. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. That side looks awesome. This side's up next. Love the water coming all the way down here. Uh, I got a little bit more refining to do here. Obviously. There's a couple of my waterfall areas where they at that are kind of poking out on a weird one. Oh, maybe it's just up here that's kind of poking out weird. Yeah, this this is kind of weird. I'm going to have to pull this out a little bit more. Same thing goes with this guy. And then, um, yeah, I'm going to try and stay away from the foliage. But I want to basically do this side onto this side now. And there you have it. Both sides are now completely finished up here. Let me show you guys a little bit of a closer look at what I did around here. Added these little hoppers, the chains, the walls, and the flower pots on the side just for a little bit of a decorative thing textured everything added these little stalactites in here now we need to start working on this little area right here but before we do that i have something to show you so as i was talking about before i set up a villager breeder over here i've got about 10 villagers in here right now because i do want to crank this all the way up to about 150 masons that we're going to be putting inside the dwarven kingdom that way we can get ourselves a ton a ton of loot and i'll do the interior of this one day or will I? We'll never know. I guess I'll have to subscribe for some more if you guys want to see. And if you haven't liked the video already, consider liking the video. I'm going to be putting a little bit of a design up here. It's going to be a hardcore heart. Going to etch it into the stone to, to kind of attract the eye a little bit better. And then we'll work our way back into the Dwarven Kingdom where I can continue on with what we're doing here for this whole build inside of the Dwarven Kingdom. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can actually see that at all, but I do have a couple hardcore hearts over here. And I think that pretty much makes this room fairly done. I am going to be adding a lot more of the detail work, but I don't want to work on the detail work of this room just yet because I do want to add a little bit of clutter, but I don't want to work around the clutter. So, whoops. Going to be moving from this room, transitioning over to this small hallway right here. I don't think that this hallway is going to require a whole lot of work, but... Got a little bit of a flat wall right here that I'm thinking it's going to have to get dug in. So we can add a little bit of detail along this wall right here. Because obviously we have the door right here, so I can't like bring it out. Otherwise, it's going to look kind of stupid. So let's see what we can come up with over here. Uh, might not look like a whole lot, but I did kick back the whole wall over here. Just a couple blocks in behind this door, which is super nice because this door kind of helps conceal what I'm going to be doing here with this wall. And I think I have a pretty good idea with what I want to do here. But I do want to show you guys something really cool that I can do with the armor stand mod that I have available to me. So I think I'm going to set something up, something up right here just so I can, I can kind of show you guys what that looks like. By placing down an armor stand like right here, I can then access the armor stand, make it into a character like this, select my inventory, throw in the weeping angel set, give it a sword or something fancy. Then I can go over here to pose and scale and I could scale these guys. Be massive statues. But it'd be kind of cool to use like maybe a few of these massive statues inside of this Dwarven Kingdom. Could be neat. I don't know exactly what I want to use it for. 
it does seem a little bit big and i don't know if it's losing any of its color but it could look really cool to have in the background of something neat but anyway it's pretty cool to do with armor stand stuff huh Uh, just like that. I love that a lot. Having like the each individual pillars coming in through here. Now I'm thinking I'm going to push these ones back. Then I'm going to have my wall basically go up here. And we can call this one basically done. Maybe we'll add a brazier or something like that. Because we do need to add some light inside this hallway. But so far, it's going pretty good. The entrance is done. Fully complete now. Now we got our braziers in place here. Did a little bit of the lighting. Honestly, turn down the gamma of my game here a little bit. Just to kind of bring out those, those shadows a bit better. I think it looks absolutely phenomenal. And as we fly up out of the Dwarven Kingdom, I love all the texture. I love all the, uh, the things going on here. The redstone door that we're going to be putting in place. That's not going to be happening for a little while. So you'll have to be patient. That'll probably be the last thing I put in here. Uh, but on our way into the Dwarven Kingdom, I'd say this place is looking absolutely phenomenal. Now, time to start the last room of the Dwarven Kingdom, or at least the first room of it, the forge area. I'm going to start off by doing a lot of these pillars here. So I might actually figure out where I want to put these pillars. They might not be in the best spots right now. I might actually have to center them out with the wall a little bit better. And then I'll be working on the facade of the actual Dwarven Kingdom back here. I got something really cool to show you guys while building up this entire project. I've hit a brand new stat, but I'm going to show you guys something um, that some of you guys may not know already. So going into your language settings, go into your font settings, go into Unicode font. It will change all of your font to be a little bit more legible. And then coming all the way out of here, going into my stats now. I've now officially placed over 1,030,083 stone. That's not half bad. And with the Wither Skeleton Farm uh, perimeter that I'm working on currently, we'll definitely be hitting 3 million, if not 4 million. And Basalt's uh, climbing up there as well. Next final boss I want to get is this end stone right here. And the sand. I think the sand won't be too bad either. But kind of a little bit of a trick tip for you guys if you guys don't know how to make your font a little bit smaller so things don't overlap in the future and now that i have all the pillars in place here these are just going to be the basic pillars that i have in place i'm going to be connecting the pillars and creating statues on these pillars potentially and connecting them up as we go and obviously dressing up these doorways over here but you'll notice that i did a little bit of the laying out of what i'm going to be doing right here for the actual dwarven kingdom this is where all of our masons are going to be going so i need to dig all the way inside of here and make like a dwarven kingdom uh so i can have all of my masons lined up on this side all of my masons lined up on this side and then build up a little bit of a facade of the entire castle for where the masons are basically going to be held so in the meantime, while we work on our Dwarven Kingdom, I'm going to start moving a lot of these villagers into the kingdom itself. That way we can start giving them trades so they can actually be masons and start up our emerald economy. And I think if I dig all the way down here, yep. So I'm basically going to be moving them from here into the Dwarven Kingdom and then I'm going to rowboat them all the way into where the forge area is. Okay, why is this guy so small? Are they typically this small? Huh? I don't know what's going on here. Anyways, it's time to start moving these guys into the Dwarven Kingdom. That way I can actually start giving them some villager trades. And I'm a little bit worried that I don't know what the I don't know what the cap is on this villager trading hall. It is absolutely cranking out villagers at this point. But it's got to stop eventually, right? Uh, yep. I've gone to the point now where I've pretty much given up on trying to keep these guys contained inside of the breeder. But what I will say, I have kind of perfected this a little bit. So check this out. Absolutely love this feature. 
drop him in here drop him in here and we just fly him right into the dwarven kingdom flawlessly oh that guy hit his head he's fine though look at that all right so that's four five uh this guy does seem a lot smaller than usual i'm not tripping am i Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. This place is going to remain a little bit of a mess for the time being, but I'll, I'll clean it up. I I promise. But this? Not a bad start. How many is in here? So I got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. 18 comes after 16. Yep. Uh, 20. Okay. 21 villagers not half bad definitely don't have the space for any of them now but i do want to give them a little bit of trade action so let me go grab myself a couple stone cutters all right here's hoping that i actually have stone cutters in here because i'm not gonna lie to you i do oh my you guys remember how to make stone cutters how to look up the recipe not bad actually what is that just normal stone and uh iron ingot i got that Okay, so now we really need a place to put these guys because obviously they won't take their trades while inside of boats. Which means that I really have to start moving them into the Dwarven Kingdom itself. This behind this door is going to look pretty, pretty awful for the time being. But I promise I'm going to expand that over time. But for now, it's just going to be what it is. Um, it's kind of like looking like a loaf of bread, huh? Kind of, kind of looks like a loaf of bread. So for now, these will just going to live in here. So in the time being, we're going to be working on this back wall right here, but I want to kind of turn my attention to above the doorway. I want to start connecting up these pillars right here. I've got a little bit of a line in place where I'm going to elevate this line and create some really cool archways and then texture around that archway. Well, have you ever done something in Minecraft that you thoroughly didn't enjoy? I just did. And I'll give you guys a hint. It wasn't the villagers. It was the walls. Oh my gosh. So I don't know if you guys can see these walls, but I have textured every single wall, not the roof, but every single wall going all the way around the Dwarven Kingdom. And that was tedious now i'm hiding up here because down there is a little bit loud but what do you guys think about the lava pouring in from the ceiling over here obviously haven't built anything up there but i wanted your guys's input on whether or not i should build something up to do with the lava coming in from the ceiling here i don't know if i 100 like it or not but i want to put the dwarven door to the actual kingdom where the doors are going to live beside this uh or behind this facade of the castle right here and I'm not too sure if this lava right here is going to detract from the door over here or if it'll be beneficial. And of course, I still have to put in the redstone door over here. So we have an actual proper entrance to this whole area, but a little bit of a different look as we enter the kingdom. Looking at that lava right there, I don't know if I like it, but... Let me know what you guys think, because I'm honestly very curious. I'm going to let it sit there. I'm going to let it cook because I'm not 100% sure. Let me get the door in place first so I can make a little bit of a better decision after that.
And now that we have the door in place, I'm going to get rid of this lava ray here because I do think it kind of does take away from the door itself. But let me know what you guys think of the door. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. As soon as I'm able to actually see past this lava, I can show you guys what it looks like. But look at that. Yeah. I got some little handles on here. This is the entrance to the Dwarven Kingdom. Obviously need a texture underneath here, which I'm going to get around to. But I was thinking we change a little bit of what we're doing for a little bit of a change of pace. And I'm thinking it's time to finally do the redstone door we've been waiting to do up here. So let's go over to the city so I can take a little bit of a closer look and see if I can figure out how to do this redstone door that I built uh, like two years ago. What could go wrong? All right. As I showed you guys before, this is the door that I want to do. I think it could be really cool to uh, make this in front of the Dwarven Kingdom. So I'm going to take a bunch of screenshots here. There are some things that I did back in the day, which is absolutely ludicrous. I don't know why I used all these shulker boxes here. Honestly, I might try to take that back because uh, that's a lot of shulker boxes. Now, before we go into this, I'm not feeling very confident. Just want to put that out there. Anyways, put in the door right here and we'll see exactly what happens. going to be doing the bottom part of the door first and then I'll work my way up. And I'm going to give you guys just a genuine reaction on whether this thing actually works or not. Whoops. Sorry. So we'll see. We'll see how things go. Okay, I know it looks ugly, but does it work? By clicking this button right here, it is. It, it doesn't work. It's non-functional. Let's just say I'm very happy that this video is going to be coming out on time because I have spent three hours trying to figure out this stupid door and I ain't going to lie. You won't be seeing much redstone from me from here on out. But anyways. Let's slap a button right there and hope that this works. If it doesn't work, I'm blowing up the whole castle. Well, frick. Hold on. Yeah, I, that's exactly what I suspected. All right. All okay, right, now, now, how about now? Oh, oh, oh. Oh my gosh. Okay, I can put away all the TNT I've been farming. Okay, right, now all I think I need to do is hopefully just like make this thing look nice. I'll probably have to create an archway up here as well. But that's okay. That's my expertise. I make things look good. I don't make things functional. So just going to kind of do all this. I don't know. Come up with a nice little design here. Just like that right and if i press this button and if i press it again ah yeah you wouldn't even know that door's there check this out so i added up a button up here yeah sure you gotta jump to hit the button but that's also fine very dwarven very demir uh, now I just need to actually make this area look good and this area look good. And I think I can kind of do something with that. I might be able to do the sides of this. Oh, what about pistons? Do those attach? I think I made the inside look good. Check it out. Blaze terracotta. Honestly, not the worst. Made a little bit of an archway on this side. And I don't think we're ever going to like really close the door when I'm on the inside of the Dwarven Kingdom. So I think I'm just going to kind of leave that as is. Now, I want to start moving in a little bit more of our masons. Now that we actually have a Dwarven Kingdom back here that we need to actually fully dig out. But I absolutely love the way that this door turned out. So now to make that door again over here. Just kidding. F that noise. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not building that again. Um... 
but I can move in a bunch of the villagers back here. So let's start doing that now. Mainly, I just want to move these villagers out the way. That way I can start actually detailing the inside here because we don't have any mine carts, any barrels, or any chests for these doors to be using. So probably going to focus on these guys. Everybody else up in the breeder up top. I'm just going to leave for now. Well, we may have lost at least five or six, but who's counting, right? Got all these guys in here. Emptied out the actual Dwarven Hall. So that means I get to get into detailing. But unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have time to get into the detailing today. So we're going to have to leave that one till next episode. But what I will say is that we are very close to being finalized with this project for the time being. Here's a little bit of a shot with shaders from the island over here because I think this looks absolutely gorgeous. And for those of you guys who are new around here, just because I'm finalizing a mega build doesn't mean we're done there yet because I still have about 25 pirate ships that I need to build in that area and a lot more things to come in that area. The thing I will say is the next project is going to be an ice build. Something I've not really done too much in this world, which I'm very excited about and I hope you guys are too. So if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing and leaving a like on the video. And as always, I appreciate each and every single one of you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I'll see you in the next one. Maybe check out this episode while you're at it. A little bit of a staring contest, huh?